So always when we're running these experiments, part of my job is to keep in mind the connection with cosmology. Cosmology allows you to place everything that you might experience as a human on this planet into some framework. And that has definitely been at the start of the Sapphire project as well. Here is some framework to put some of these results in. This is his normal rate, speed. Monty, keep up. Planets, very dynamic electrical systems. Currents flowing in and out. And from what it, we know now, it's not a simple, it's not simply a current like flowing through a wire into, a, into something and out the other end. Current flows in and out of the North Pole. Current flows in and out of the South Pole. I just drew one of the ring currents up there. I think we're up to about four or five now that we know about. It's very complicated stuff. So let's take that starting point as what we know about our local environment. Put it inside the solar system. So stars also, they do have, and we will eventually measure it, currents going in and out of their poles as well. The numbers are a little tough to nail down, but a planet might have 10 to the seventh, so 10 million amps more or less flowing in. A star might have a billion amps flowing in and out of it. You start to see the pattern when you draw the pictures. This is a cosmic blueprint, if you will, for how electrical structures are formed. Each star is also following this blueprint, but then its sub-members also follow the blueprint. The planets are receiving their energy from their star. The star is connected to its source of power. The planets are connected to their source of power, and their source of power is their sun. So you have to imagine, if not direct currents flowing between them, at least some sort of resonance or induction. But the planets only get their power from, from their sun. If you imagine one of those being Jupiter, say one of those planets there, we, when we look at the sky, we see Jupiter as a dot, pretty small dot, right? But the magnetosphere of Jupiter, the body, the real body of Jupiter is, is huge. It would take up, if you did this with your arm to the nighttime sky, that's how big the body of Jupiter would look if we had eyes to see it. Okay, so composition of planets, as Wall so well said years ago, we understand planetary formation so little currently that we need a different theory of planetary formation for every planet in our solar system. One of the patterns that we see in electrical systems throughout all of nature is membranes, boundaries. The plasma naturally forms its own version of a membrane or a boundary. So we'll start with our star, shorthand it, right? And then we'll ask, how does the star fit in its world? the neighborhoods that it comes from and lives in. So that green there is an interstellar filament, which you can kind of see in the background of the slide here. And the stars are set up on those filaments. Before the advent of the Herschel and Planck space telescopes, we honestly believe that the stars were randomly distributed in the sky. We believe that, right? And then once you see the filaments, Every star we see in the sky is on a filament. There's no randomness to it if you can see the underlying structure behind it. There's also these other blobs that we see now, and as a scientific community, we're bounded by what we already know about. And so they have a name, they're called proto-stars, Anytime somebody uses the word proto, you know they don't know what they're talking about, right? 
So I don't think they're stars. They might be. I don't know. The point is, they might be something else. They don't have to be on this track that we call "be a star," right? They could be something else that is needed in the interstellar medium. We have found, to date, over 200 organic molecules in the interstellar medium. I'm sure that number will continue to grow exponentially as we study more and more. One of the big questions, of course, is where do they come from? How do they form? How do they get there? Now, what about the inorganics in the interstellar medium? Again, the number keeps growing, but these have been known about for quite a while. That group right there of 11 elements, inorganics, metals, are known to be out there in the interstellar medium. How do they get there? Why are they there? Big questions, right? We thought, well, wait a minute. We 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 have a list to compare this to. Why don't we compare this known list from stars in interstellar medium? Why don't we compare that to which ones we find in sapphire? Right? <laughs> yeah. So pretty good, right? I think the evidence speaks for itself. I think the evidence、okay. speaks for itself. <laughs> It might even demand a verdict. Yes. Right. Right. 